Here's another installment in Gracie's greenhouse, and this one is basically focusing on the heating system. Uh, this is actually a retake, believe it or not. Uh, everything else you've ever seen has been a one take. I'm sure that's pretty obvious to see, but uh, there was some omissions and some stuff that didn't come out right in the last one, so we're gonna redo this. Plus it was in the afternoon and the soil didn't really show what I wanted to show as far as how it's being heated. Um, so this is our regular old dirt trash run of the mill, works just fine, lasts a long time, um, water heater. And what we've basically done to vent this is we put a double thick or the insulated, uh, this thing's been running now for about 20 minutes. And you can still touch the outside of this because this is double insulated. And then if you can see all the way up at the top, um, we actually put it inside of a um, five inch, right, or a six inch um, double insulated pipe. So we have the three inch double insulated pipe held in place with screws on a double, on another double six inch pipe that goes through the roof and that is barely warmer than ambient. Uh, that really worked well and we're not burning up our Solex or anything else, as you know, that's plastic. Um, this is our air burper in case we do a massive water draining and water replenishing deal in here this is the highest point by far and so the air collects up there and we're able to open this up and let the air out but we do have an air scrubber on it um, the next thing i want to talk about is the thermostat and the way that we've wired this and what's going on with this uh, we Originally, when we were thinking about doing this, we were thinking that we would turn this thing, that this thing would be thermostatically controlled, and, and we haven't gotten to that point yet with it. Um, and some of that's me, and some of that's the way the system works. Uh, one thing is the system's kind of like trying to stop a freight train or trying to start a freight train. It takes a long time. It takes probably two days of this thing running for it to actually start really noticing the heat that it gives off, okay? So uh, we're thinking at this point that what we're basically gonna do is just turn it on for weeks at a time. When we look at the forecast and we see that it's gonna be cold, like tonight it's going to be 25 degrees. And that's pretty damn cold out here. It's normally 27, 30 degrees in the morning, which is a problem for plants, but nothing like 25 degrees or if that's off by a couple of degrees and it's 22 or 23 that's pretty damn cold and you're talking about 10 degrees after the plants would be ruined and crystallized and frozen from the weather anyway the way that we've wired this is we've run a switch on here for the thermostat that we're not using and the therm the switch turns on the transformer and the transformer powers up the uh Powers up the thermostat. Donna, can you get a shot of that thermostat over there? And you can see that the probe that's in there is actually, you got to move over. There you go. The, the thermostat, if you can read it or not, says that the earth is 61 degrees. So then what would happen is that when that got to what was set, um, When that got below what was set, what we wanted it to be set at, that would turn, that would trigger this box. This box would then in turn power up this outlet. And then what we have here is we have our water pump for the system just put into this so that we could just have this plugged into here. The um, Water heater would have its own thermostat, so it would always be set at about 120 is what we're ending up doing with it. And then this would turn the pump on and off as needed. But there's, at this point, to my understanding, there's no way we could get that thing to react two or three days ahead. And that's the problem. So that's why we have all of this money here. <laughs> And we have this plugged into the wall and we look at the thermostat and we plug this in a couple of days ahead and then we unplug it when we're sure that it's not going to be super crazy cold at night. Um, I think you've seen in the other videos how there's a strip of PEX tubing about every six inches in here on center 
and I want to show you the byproduct of how that's working. So if we go here where the ground's wet from the plants, the ground is 60 degrees, which sort of makes sense because it's kind of early in the morning and the probe two inches down says it's 61, which tells you that it's warmer down there than it is up on top because it's been giving off heat all night and it's just now starting to become light out here. So the dry stuff is 60, 65, 66 degrees. But if we take and we go down here, closer to the PEX tubing, okay, so what are we now? We're five, six inches down, and we see that the temperature is actually 71 degrees. So if we were to go down here, and we're gonna guess that this is roughly a foot, and now we see that the earth is 90 degrees down there. So um, I've been reading a lot about what plants really want and what plants, what's optimum for plants. And it seems that they really like the dirt to be somewhere between 70 and 80 degrees. I think they said uh, 23 Celsius, which was 74 Fahrenheit. So if we're damn near 90 degrees down here, um, 89 and if we're 89 degrees down there and we're 60 up here where the roots are we're trying to hit about 70 degrees um, it's you know it's working it keeps it pretty warm in here um, as far as warming the air from the heat radiating off the boxes that seems to be working pretty well what we're thinking about doing now in addition to this is to have um, registers in between the planter boxes that would give off some heat. So basically what would happen is the water line would come in on its way out after it's warm the dirt we would run that into a register that would or a baseboard water heater is what they really really call it. Those things are good for uh, the way we would be using them probably 450 BTUs per foot and if we have eight of those things in here that are two or three feet long, uh, that could help us out quite a bit. And then have a register on the, on the walls that are six or seven feet long. That might be enough to keep it a little bit warmer. Um, if you look on the chart, the if you if you tell that if you say that you've got ten thousand square cubic feet of air, which is what we've got in here. Um, if you tell it that you want to keep it 20 degrees warmer, which we're going to say that it would be the worst case scenario, it would be 12 degrees and we want it to be 32 degrees so it doesn't freeze the plants. They'll tell you that you need about 34,000 BTUs and that's figuring practically no insulation value. So this is a 40 gallon, one of these things. And if you look it up on the chart, it's about 40,000 BTUs. So we kind of got lucky on that. Um, we're going to see what happens with the registers. We'll know more about that next winter because we're just about done with the winter here. So anyway, that's, uh, that's about it. The only other thing I'd really like to say is that we have a thousand, Donna, if you can show all the planter boxes, we have a thousand linear feet of PEX tubing in here. Probably the actual, actual, actual truth is probably 980 feet of PEX tubing in here. And if I was ever to do that again, I would probably put 2,000 feet in here. And the reason I'm saying that is because if you look at the temperature gauge on the manifold out versus the temperature gauge on the manifold in or the return, you'll see that we're only losing about 10 degrees and you would really want at least twice that much. So um, I would like to run more. That's why I'd like to put registers in here and do everything I can to try to get rid of some more heat out of the water heater and put more heat into the room. Okay, thanks a lot.